Welcome to the video for chapter 25 of the Cambridge Introduction to Sanskrit, which is going to tell you about stem gradation in nouns and about NT stems. In chapter 18, we saw that athematic verbs had stem gradation, i.e. they had strong and weak stems. So, for example, of the root yuj, which is class 7, we had a strong stem yunaj and a weak stem yunj. In the strong stem, na was added before the stem final consonant, and in the weak stem, n was added before the stem final consonant. Na is guna, it has an a, that makes it strong. N does not have a vowel, it's zero grade, that's what we use for the weak stem. The strong stem was used in the singular, the weak stem was used in the dual and plural. Now, there also are nouns that have stem gradation, i.e. that have strong and weak forms of the stem. And so we talk about strong cases and weak cases. And what you will find is that strong cases are present in the masculine, in the first three cases of the singular, nominative, vocative, accusative, in the first three cases of the dual, nominative, vocative, and accusative, and in the first two cases of the plural, namely the nominative and the vocative. Weak cases are all others. Among the various kinds of nouns that have stem gradation, so that have a strong and a weak stem, we have nt stems or nt stems. There are several kinds of those. First of all, we have want or munt added to a noun. So x want or x munt would mean having x. And then we have the active participles of the present, past, and future. All of these add guna ant in their strong forms and nt in their weak forms. And through internal sandhi, this nt, the weak nt, often appears as at. If you don't quite remember how this works, go back to chapter 7 on nasals between consonants. In brief, what happens is that if a nasal appears between two consonants, then through internal sandhi, it changes into a. So nt often appears as at. All nt stems use the same endings as other consonant stems, so the ones that were introduced in chapter 15. This means that we don't need to memorize any new endings here, but we still need to look at nt stems separately because of their internal sandhi, and also, of course, in order to familiarize ourselves with stem gradation. So just one brief first example. The noun gunawant, sorry, the adjective gunawant means having qualities or having good qualities and therefore virtuous. This is formed by taking the noun guna, meaning quality, and adding want. An example of a strong form of this would be the accusative singular guna wantam, where we have guna plus strong want and the accusative singular ending am, as opposed to the accusative plural, which is weak and consists of guna, what in the weak form, and the accusative plural ending ach, so guna wantam as opposed to guna wattach. But let's look at an entire want stem paradigm. So what you have here is the masculine and the neuter forms of gunawant, meaning having good qualities and therefore virtuous. The feminine forms are going to come in a little while. The shaded fields here contain the strong forms. All other fields contain weak forms. So you can see the strong forms are limited to the masculine and there to the nominative vocative accusative singular, nominative vocative accusative dual, and only the nominative and vocative in the plural. If we start by looking at the singular forms, we get gunawan, gunawan, gunawantam. As so often, the nominative and vocative singular of consonant stems have a slightly unpredictable form, so these we just need to memorize gunawan, gunawan. Then we continue with guna wan tam. So what we have is guna want, the strong stem. And then our accusative singular ending am added without any internal sandhi. So in front of the a, the t remains just as it is guna wan tam. Then the rest of the singular is all weak. So we have the stem guna wat. 
and to that we then have our endings a e ach ach i added so we have gunawata gunawati gunawata gunawata gunawati then in the dual we first of all have a few strong forms again namely nominative vocative accusative gunawantau so au the ending that we already know added to the strong stem gunawant no internal sandi gunawantau but in the instrumental dative ablative dual first of all we have the weak rather than the strong stem so gunawat but in front of biham the ending which begins with a voiced consonant we then have the t which is unvoiced also becoming voiced so changing into a d and therefore we have guna wad biam in the genitive and locative finally we have the ending och which we also already know och begins with a vowel and in front of this vowel the t at the end of guna wat remains as it is so we have guna wat toch in the plural we have nominative vo vocative guna wan tach so strong stem plus the ending ach that we already know. Accusative, however, gunawatach. So the weak stem, gunawat, plus the ending for the accusative plural that we already know, ach. So gunawantach, gunawantach, gunawatach. Then in the instrumental dative ablative, we have endings that begin with a voiced consonant. In front of that, the T at the end of the stem becomes voiced too, so turns into a D. We have the weak stem, and so it's guna wad bich, guna wad biach, guna wad biach. Genitive plural has the ending arm. In front of that, the stem does not change, so it's guna wad tam with the t as normal. And the locative plural has the ending su, which does begin with a consonant, but it's an unvoiced consonant, so the t remains as it is, it remains unvoiced, so we have guna wad su. So much for the masculine forms, which show stem gradation. Then for the neuter forms in the singular, nominative, vocative, accusative, we have guna wat, so that's the weak stem without any endings. In the dual, we have guna wat di, which is the weak stem plus the ending e that we already know from other um, consonant stems in the neuter dual. And then the neuter plural, nominative, vocative, accusative, has guna wan ti, which for all intents and purposes looks like a strong form but basically what we have here is the nasal added before the stem final sound so before the stem final t that we've also seen added elsewhere so for example in manan si chakshung shi jaganti and so on so strictly speaking this is not a strong form however given that it does look like one if you find it easier to simply remember as a strong form Go ahead. The feminines then of ones and month stems are formed by adding e to the weak form of the stem, so guna wat or a form ending in mat. And these feminines are then declined just like regular long i stems, i.e., just like nadi and similar forms which were introduced in chapter 13. So, for example, the feminine of gunawant would be gunawati, and of that we would have the singular gunawati, gunawati, gunawatim, gunawatya, gunawatyai, and so on. Want stems, specifically, not month stems, but want stems, can be used adverbially. And what is happening there is as follows. In the accusative singular neuter, so ending in what. One stems can describe the manner in which something happens. So, for example, chakra what would be chakra, wheel, what, like, wheel like, or like a wheel. Pariwartante hi artach cha viasa na nicha. Like a wheel, the artach cha viasa na nicha, the fortunes and misfortunes, pariwartante revolve, which is a quote from the Mahabharata. We find another want stem in tawant participles, which are participles referring to the past active. These are formed by adding want to ta participles. So we've had um, likita, smirta, uh, burta, and so on. And on the basis of these, we now find a new participle. We take these forms, for example, likita, having been written, and add want to them giving us likita want, 
which then means having written. On the basis of another ta participle, kurta, having been done, we would likewise get kurta want, which would mean having done. So while ta participles are past passive, ta want participles are past active. If you remember, there were a few ta participles that had active meanings. Those were the ta participles of verbs where a passive meaning just didn't make sense. And in those cases, we do also get ta want participles, but they simply have identical meaning to the ta participles. So, for example, gata means having gone, because having been gone doesn't make sense. So gata means having gone, and gata want simply means exactly the same thing, namely having gone. Ta want participles are declined just like other want or man stems, i.e. just like guna want, which we were just introduced to. Now on to another kind of nt stem, and that is participles formed by adding either nt or ant. Now the suffix nt or ant is used to form the present and future active participles of thematic and athematic verbs. Nt is added to the present stem of thematic verbs. Thematic verbs have a stem that ends in the thematic vowel, hence their name, so the stem ends in a, and to that we then find nt added, and this gives us the present active participle. So, for example, from pr bharati to carry, we get bharant, carrying, one who is carrying. From ni nayati to lead, we get nayant, leading, one who is leading. From gam gachati, we get gachant, going. From drsh pashyati to see, we get pashyant, seeing, and so on. Ant, on the other hand, is added to the weak stem of athematic verbs to form the present active participle. And so we get from us the weak stem s. To that we find ant added, and so we get the present active participle sant, being. From shru to listen, we get the weak stem shrnu. Add ant to that, you get shrnwant through internal sandi, so not shrnu ant, but shrnwant, and that means listening. From han to kill, we take the weak stem in its prevocalic form, gn. Remember, you have already seen this in, for example, knanti, the third person plural present, or aknan, the third person plural in the imperfect. So to this gn, we add ant, and that gives us the present active participle knant, killing. Nt is also added to future stems to form the future active participle. Now remember, future stems all end in sia or ishya, therefore they are all thematic. So we don't have a difference between adding nt or ant. No, we add nt throughout. And so we get, for example, from gam, gamishyant, about to go. From kur, karishyant, about to do, and so on. Participles formed using ant or nt have exactly the same endings as want month stems, but with one exception. And that is that the nominative singular masculine forms end in an, and not, as we saw with, for example, guna want, in an. So, for example, of the present active participle of drsh, present tense pasyati, meaning to see, we have the stem pasyant, and the nominative singular masculine form pasyan. All the other forms are then exactly parallel to the forms of gunawant, so we have gunawantam, pasyantam, gunawata, pasyata, and so on. But the nominative singular masculine of the present active participle ends in an, and so does the nominative singular masculine of the future active participle. There is one other exception, and that concerns not the endings but the stems. Ant participles and nt participles have the exact same stem gradation as want month stems, with the exception of the present active participles of class 3 verbs, which only ever show the weak stem. So, for example, from hu, a class 3 verb meaning to pour or to sacrifice, we have the stem juhwat, consisting of juhu, the weak stem, weak present stem of hu, plus the weak suffix at, never the strong suffix ant, only ever weak at, and so we get juhwat, and from that the nominative singular masculine juhwat, 
the accusative singular masculine, juhwatam, and so on. Now, as for the feminines of ant or nt participles, in a nutshell, they all add long e to either the weak or the strong participle stem. This means they are all regular long i stems, i.e. they decline like nadi, which was introduced in chapter 13. The feminines of present active participles add e to the strong participle stem of a thematic verb, but to the weak participle stem of an athematic verb. So, for example, from patient, seeing, we get the feminine patienti, but from sant, being, we get the feminine sati. The feminines of future active participles add long e usually to the strong participle stem, but they can also more rarely add it to the weak participle stem. So from parishyant, about to carry, we can get the feminine parishyanti or also the feminine parishyati. Now, um, the past active participles are want stems, but let's just briefly remind us of those as well. Want stems form their feminines by adding e to the weak stem, and that's exactly what happens to these participles as well. So from likita want, meaning having written, we get the feminine likita wati with the weak participle stem. The last nt stem to look at is the adjective mahant, which means big or great. When it is used as the first member of a compound, it appears as maha, and so, for example, we get maha raja, meaning great king. Like other nt stems, mahant has a stem gradation, but whereas the weak stem has exactly the expected zero grade, so we get mahat. The strong stem doesn't stand in guna, but rather it stands in virti. So we don't get mahant, but we get mahant. So the masculine nominative singular is mahan, the accusative is mahantam, and the dual we get mahantau, and the plural we get mahantach. And in the weak forms we get exactly the zero grade we would expect, instrumental mahata, dative mahate, and so on. The feminine forms of mahant are formed on the basis of the zero grade, so on the basis of the weak stem, and so we get mahati, 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 mahatya, and so on, declining just like nadi. Note, the vocative singular masculine of mahant is mahan, so here we do actually get guna instead of vritti. This chapter, like many others before it, has introduced you to a rather large number of new details. So just like before, what you need to know is which bits you need to have an active command of, whereas which other bits you just need to be able to recognize when you run into them when reading a Sanskrit text. You do need to know actively which cases are strong and which are weak in noun stems that have stem gradation. You need to be able to decline gunawant, and you need to be able to decline a nt or ant participle, which in effect means you just need to remember that the nominative singular masculine of a nt or ant participle ends in an. In all of the other forms, nt and ant participles decline exactly like gunawant. Finally, you should remember that the feminines of nt stems are regular long i stems, i.e. they decline just like nadi. It is much less important to know whether feminines are formed on the basis of a weak stem or a strong stem. That is something that you only need to know if your goal is to write Sanskrit yourself rather than just being able to read Sanskrit texts. That was it for this chapter. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any comments or suggestions, we would love to hear from you. Please do write to us at ruppel at cambridge-sanskrit.org. And now, for your own work on this material, good luck and have fun.